Now that you're familiar with the Framer interface, it's time to get familiar with the anatomy of the things we build and unpack the content of a Framer project. Let's take a super high level look at the anatomy of a Framer project. At the top level, you have your Framer workspace that contains all of your projects. Within your workspace, you have the option of creating folders to keep your projects organized, but these are completely optional. Then you have the projects themselves, each of which is essentially a website. You decide when and where to publish them, but one project equals one website. Within a project, we have pages. Within each page, we have a design canvas. And on the canvas, we design our pages within breakpoints. More on these in a moment. Let's open up a project and take a good look at the guts. Here we have a fresh new project, which again means a fresh new website. And a website is nothing without pages. On the left sidebar, we have our pages panel where we see our one and only page at the moment, which is called home. The home page is actually a bit special. It's the default page that loads when someone navigates to your root domain, like framer.com, that's our homepage, or google.com, that's their homepage. You'll notice you can't change the name of the homepage. There's actually no need to because page names in Framer determine the path to get to the page in the URL, but the path to the homepage is the root domain by itself. You might be thinking, wait, I don't want my page to just say home in a browser tab or on search engines or when it's saved as a bookmark, but that's actually called the page title. And it's metadata that we can edit by clicking on the ellipsis menu and clicking settings. Here you'll find all that metadata for the page. Let's head back and create a second page by clicking on the plus button and choosing new page. You'll notice that this page has a different icon and a slash in front of the name, which we can customize to determine what the path to this page will be. For example, framer.com has a page called Academy, which when published can be found at framer.com slash Academy. This becomes extra important once your site's been published, since changing the name of the page will change the URL to get to that page, meaning the old URL becomes a broken link. And anyone with the old link will end up getting the old 404 page not found. Don't get me wrong, it's fixable with something called a redirect, but that's for another lesson. You can only have one home page for your site, but you can change which page that is at any time by clicking the ellipsis menu and choosing set home page. You can also group pages together by clicking the plus button, choosing new folder, giving the folder a name, and then dragging pages into the folder. You'll notice folders have a slash in the name, just like pages. That's because these subfolders are now part of the path to get to these pages. In this case, shop could be a folder, but it could also be a shop page if you think about it. What's cool is that a page can also behave as a folder for other pages, and a folder can be converted to a page from the ellipsis menu in case plans change along the way. When it's time to design, the canvas is where it all goes down. Each page of your project has its own freeform canvas that you can use however you'd like, along with a big frame called a breakpoint, where we design the content of the page itself. Any elements placed within the breakpoint will be part of the web page when you publish it and anything placed on the outskirts of the canvas will not. So the rest of the canvas is yours to do with as you please, just like Figma and Sketch. By default, each new page starts us off with a desktop breakpoint that's 1200 pixels wide, but we can double click this bar to customize that. What's even more important here is that we can click the plus icon to add additional breakpoints for tablets, phones, or anything in between, which allows us to create different layouts of a page that are optimized for different viewport sizes. Don't worry, this doesn't mean you have to design everything three times. Framer makes it much easier than that, but we'll dive much more deeply into breakpoints and designing responsively later in this course. All right, last thing. We'll have plenty of time to look at different types of design elements and their properties in the coming lessons, but before we do, I just wanna mention the most fundamental building block we use in our page layouts, frames. If you're coming over from Figma, these will be very familiar to you. If this is all new to you, a frame is essentially a rectangle, but a rectangle that can have other layers inside of it. You can use a frame to group things, contain things, stack things, grid things, or just to make a plain old rectangle. 
In fact, we don't have or need a rectangle tool. Frames have it covered. I could ramble on all day about the millions of use cases for frames, but let's wrap this one up now that we've covered the basic anatomy of a framer project. Now you know that projects live within your workspace. Each project is a site that contains pages, and each page is a design canvas with breakpoints where the magic happens. Now head to Framer, get comfortable, and I'll see you in the next lesson.